to my navigator. Navigating around the galley. Guacamole. It's Texas style. Hot enough to clean your teeth. Now you eat. I need practice at the wheel. What's the deal? Two ten. Ten. Cook in the Navy. You come up with the darndest concoctions. Try it, he'd say. You'll get used to it. I gained 20 pounds. He's still deadly to diet. You know, once your tongue gets numb, this stuff isn't that bad. There's a sight. To live. I read once that the first Spaniard here thought it was as beautiful as any city in Spain. The temples were painted blue then. Blue? It's hard to imagine. Must have been quite a port. I wonder if those two archaeologists are going to find anything underwater here. Wouldn't that be great? Terry and Victor deserve to make a big discovery. Throttle her back. We'll figure out how to deal with this reef. I guess you probably noticed the charts of this area don't show much detail. Yeah, I have. I sure wish I knew more if we're going to anchor here for long. I should have borrowed some of Westerman's charts before I quit. Cheap slug would never bring divers this far. Sure made some great charts of this coast. Just have to make do. Very careful. Well, I have dived along here, so I can generally tell you what it's like. If you could see it from the side, here's the shore, the cliffs, and the temple. Here's the water line. And inside the reef, it's a flat, sandy bottom, about four or five meters deep. Maybe needs three. The reef is actually sometimes above the surface. And then other places, it's hidden. But either way, it would tear the belly right out of Mimi. No breaks in the reef, no channels through it? Not that I know of. But if we could get in here, it'd be calm anchorage, even in bad weather. It's a drag. Yep. What do you say we drop anchor here for the night, chow down, see what tomorrow brings? Not for that. And the winds don't blow, and it's time for us to leave her. <laughs> That's great. So I hear the rest of your story. You and Mrs. Granville, Mimi, came back from France after World War II, the newlyweds. And then what? I was stationed in Annapolis until my discharge. Me being a fisherman and Mimi a fisherman's daughter, well, we spent every spare moment looking at the water and wanting to be on it. No boat? Right. One day we were walking along the shore of Weems Creek and I saw this beautiful old French fishing trawler tied to a tree. Turned out she was for sale. The guy had brought her from France was broke, needed the dough. We sold everything we had, borrowed the rest, and this was our first real home. Is that a boat engine? Big boat to be inside the reef. Sure is. Looks like 
think they're heading out now. Let's ask them how they get in here. Crank her up. I'll get the anchor. Right. for the reef. Either they know where there's a channel or we're going to be fishing for survivors. I wonder why they're running dark. Pretty strange. sack out. It's been a long one. Sleep well. Oh, and Captain Granville, thanks for the stories and all. It's great to get to know my pop's old buddy. In that case, I tell you what. Since I called you by your nickname, and your old man has spilled the beans about mine. Granny. Good night. Good night. Senor. Howdy. It is forbidden to start fires in an archaeological zone. I didn't start this. No? No, I think it's somebody's lighthouse. Como? Can I help? Ah, Victor. Muchacho, como esta? Bien, maestro, bien. Glad you came when you did. I was having a little trouble explaining to the Guardian. Guardian? What I was... Captain, this is Tomas Segovia, the chief archaeologist here at Tulum. He was also my professor. Mucho gusto. You are the Capitan who works with Victor. Si. Mucho gusto, Capitan. Hola, Segovia. Eh, querida amiga, ¿cómo estás? Bien. Bien. Ah. 
Hi, Captain. Hi. Oh, listen, CT is just fine. He and Kiche headed straight for the beach. <laughs> so, what's up? I was just about to explain. Last night, we saw a good-sized boat motor from beneath the cliffs here right through the reef. No channel markers, no buoys, nothing. They didn't even have running lights, for that matter. We went to ask them how they knew where the break in the reef was, but they seemed to be in a big hurry. When I got to the place where they crossed the reef, I noticed a light up here in the cliff. You could only see it on the path that the boat took. Now I see why. Got any idea what he's talking about? Mm -mm. Me neither. Capitan, they used a fire and a small temple on the cliff. Right. Look, here we are at the fire. There's the temple. You're on a boat out there, and you can see the light from the fire through that small window in the temple. You're on the right course to get through the reef. It's kind of a directional lighthouse. Increíble. I'll be darned. I have heard that the local people sometimes do that, see? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? The ancient people could have done the same thing. No, no, Victor, I am afraid not. They used that temple to mark the beginning of winter. Mi amigo, venga. Mira. You see, Capitan, I am certain the rising sun will shine right through this temple on December 21st. It was no life. Oh, <laughs> Segovia. The Maya were terrific astronomers. They figure out how to predict the movement of the sun and planets, especially Venus. But Maestro here believed that's all they did. Segovia believes that every temple was built to mark the movement of some star. We disagree. The trouble is, he keeps discovering some very good evidence. You'll see. December 21st. I don't know about that, but I'd sure like to see if it works now as a lighthouse. I'd like to get through that reef. And a break in the reef would be a good place for us to start our exploration. That's right. If the ancient Maya used the same channel to get their canoes out, mm -hmm. we might find something down there. Victor, I'm afraid your word will have to wait. OK, ¿qué pasó? The director of Inawa was here yesterday. He needs from you a statement that your work will not damage the coral reef. He expects you in Merida first thing tomorrow. Oh, no. So, who good for you over here? Well, I picked up somebody in Cozumel. Hey, go back. Nope, they're staying on. It's first mate. Uh, I thought it was going to be just me and you. What's this guy like? We're here. It's going to be off the time. Pepper? Hi, CT. Here, she did a pro? All right. Where are the others? Got some unexpected business in Merida. You've got a couple of days off. Great. I mean, no, no time off. School starts tomorrow. School? Diving school. Scuba diving. All right. Saloon to visit the real Segovia. The Segovia in the story was made up, but he was modeled after a real archaeologist who works right here at Saloon. This is the building some people in the story thought was a lighthouse. Now, nobody really knows what it was used for 700 years ago. In fact, nobody knows what most of these buildings were for. But Segovia, the real Segovia, thinks at least some of these buildings 
may have been used to mark the movements of the sun. This expedition is about how keeping track of the sun can help us keep track of time. It's kind of complicated, but it's interesting, because you can do it yourself. Segovia, that's what most people call him, reminded me that the Earth travels around the sun once every year. One trip around the sun equals one year. What Segovia thinks the Maya could do is tell almost exactly each time the Earth made one trip around the sun. Imagine trying to tell within a day or two how long a year was just by looking for clues in nature. He explained how he thinks the Maya did it, and he started by telling me I could do the same thing. He said if I didn't sleep so late every morning, I would see that the sun comes up in a slightly different place every day. I always thought the sun came up in the east. Well, it does, but not always exactly due east. In fact, on the first day of winter, called the winter solstice, it rises pretty far to the right, or south of due east. Then, each day, the sun rises slightly further to the north, little by little, until the first day of summer. On that day, called the summer solstice, the sunrise stops moving north and starts back to the south. Now each day, the sun rises a little further south, until on the next winter solstice, it rises just where it started, exactly one year earlier. Of course, then it starts moving north all over again. Segovia thinks the Maya could tell when the winter solstice occurred. He thinks they placed this small temple in exactly the right spot, so that if they sat on a special throne in the wall surrounding Tulum, they could sight the sunrise right through the temple, but only on that one day, only on the first day of winter, and then they'd know when another year had passed. I sat on that throne on the first day of winter, waiting with Segovia for the sunrise to see if his theory could be true. It was quite an experience. And so the, 700 years ago, the Maya kings the really Maya, sat they right were here? Watching, they were watching this phenomenon, astronomical phenomenon, Yes, at least 700 years ago. You are looking what nobody has been seen before in, si in 700 years. How do you like that? <laughs> Segovia has calculated that the sunrise should be visible through the temple today. But a lot of people don't believe, as he does, that the Maya actually planned it that way. Now, not everyone believes you when you tell them this. You <laughs> are right. <laughs> nobody, they say I was crazy. <laughs> What I saw in the next few minutes may not prove the Maya built the temple for this purpose, but it did give me the feeling that Segovia certainly was not crazy. The dog house on ourselves. Right. So, wow, is that... <laughs> you see, it's coming. It's coming now. Is that it right there? Yeah, it's going to be in the middle of the window. How do you like that? You know, you are just looking what the Mayas did 700 years ago. Wow. You see? That's incredible. That's perfect. We can never know for sure, but it looked to me like the Maya were good astronomers, measuring a year by keeping track of where the sun rose. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that perfect, that, that, that clear right through there. Of course, every sunrise shows us that the Earth moves in another way. It spins around like a top once every day, 365 days a year. And that helps us keep track of time, too. Long after my trip to Tulum, I got the chance to go to London, England, to talk to some people who could tell me about the rotation of the Earth. In fact, a funny thing happened along the way, and it happened because the Earth is rotating. I left Boston at night, but by the time I got to London, it was morning. I thought I'd better call home, and so I looked for a telephone booth. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, I knew there was a time difference between London and Boston, but I made a small mistake about just how that worked. My little brother answered the Collect phone. Collect call from Ben Affleck to Boston. Hello? Hey, Case, how you doing, old chap? Ben? Where are you? In London, remember? Oh, yeah. You know what time it is? Well, sure I know what time it is. It's about 10 in the morning here, so five hour time difference must be about three in the afternoon over there. Why aren't you in school? It's not three in the afternoon. It's five o'clock in the morning. 
morning. What? Five o'clock? In the morning. In the morning? Oops. I think I miscalculated. Wanna talk to mom? <laughs> I added when I should have subtracted. That's because I didn't understand how the world turns. Can I go back to sleep now? Yeah, sure. Sorry, Case. Cheerio! Yeah, same to you, whatever that means. It looked like I needed some help understanding a few things about the rotation of the Earth. The people at the Greenwich Observatory outside London have been keeping track of the Earth's rotation for over 300 years. I got a lesson in how the Earth spins and how they've been timing that spin at Greenwich from Dr. Stuart Malin, the head of the observatory. He also showed me why I woke my brother up. So that's roughly what the Earth would look like from space. It's pretty neat. With just the sun illuminating it, that's the sun out there. And the rest is just totally dark. That's right. This side is in light, that's the uh -huh. daytime side. And, and this, this is side dark. is dark, so that's the nighttime side. Right. So, um, down this edge here, where the shadow is just coming up, if you lived along there, you'd see the sun just rising on the horizon. Like dawn. That's dawn. That's 6 o'clock in the morning. Right. And down the other side, where the sun's setting, that's... That's sunset. Sunset, 6 o'clock at night. Right. And down here, on the far side from the sun? Midnight. Brilliant. So, nearly there. But the Earth doesn't stand still, of course. The Earth is spinning. Right. Which way does it spin? This way around, or from west towards the east. Stuart pointed out that when I arrived in London, it was just past dawn. And if you come around to London, where you've got to by now, uh -huh. it's two hours after dawn, so that's right. 8 o'clock in the morning. Is that when you landed? Uh, yeah, right about okay. there. But you didn't get to the phone straight away. It took another two hours. And that was 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Here we come around to Boston. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. The sun hasn't risen yet. It doesn't even come up. That's right about when I called. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you weren't too popular. <laughs> this helps. If I imagine myself standing right here in Boston and then just kind of rolling towards the sun at sunrise, it's kind of like, I mean, it's not like the sun is coming up, but more me moving towards the sun than away from it and back to it again. I really was beginning to get it. I could see now why we have to set our clocks to different hours at different places on Earth. But how do we know how to synchronize our clocks so that when it's exactly 10 o'clock in London, it's exactly 5 o'clock in Boston? For that to happen, somebody has to keep time for the world. For hundreds of years, the astronomers at Greenwich did just that, by using the rotation of the Earth. Each day, they set the observatory clock by noting the exact moment when the noonday sun passed over an imaginary line called the Greenwich Meridian. That's what the black tape on the globe is supposed to represent. Midday, if it's noon at Greenwich, mm -hmm. then it's before noon in that direction, right. and it's afternoon in this direction. So and it's, it's morning always, here. and it's noon all the way down here. That's right, all the way from the North Pole to the South Pole. The Greenwich astronomers used a telescope to observe the sun crossing the Greenwich Meridian. The telescope is right on the meridian, and a brass rail in the ground marks where it is. The next morning, I talked with Carol Stott, the curator of astronomy, and I realized I could use the meridian and the sun to tell time myself. Just uh, being a human sundial here. That's right. What time is it, anyway? Well, I'll try not to look at my watch. We'll have a see if we can work it out. OK. And what you can work out, what we know for certain is it's going to be noon. Right, when the sun's can, yeah. directly on the meridian, and your shadow will go straight down there. Uh -huh. So, OK, it's got to be before noon, uh, hasn't it? Well, this is about 12, 11, 10, about 10. Then. Yeah, we're a couple of hours before noon. OK, you're within about five minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this is a pretty accurate way to keep time. Oh, it's, a sundial is, in a lot of ways, the most accurate way of keeping time because you're using the basic timekeeper, mm. which is the rotation of the Earth, isn't it? Right. The sun. That basic timekeeper is what the Greenwich astronomers used back when they were telling the rest of the world how to set their clocks. Each day, the astronomers would crank open the observatory as noon approached. Can I come down and do the next one? Can you do okay. that? It's up there. I had watched the winter solstice sunrise at Tulum. Now I was going to watch the noonday sun at Greenwich. I'll just bring this towards you. So they only use it to look at the sun? Well, today we're looking at the sun, but in fact, we can look at the stars. You just go through the same procedure. That's the rough adjustment. I've got to get it now right against this scale. So we've got the right height for the sun today. 
OK, that's right. Let me come round and get the sun in line for you. Can I just have a look through? Because it would be a quick operation when it happens. Right, the sun is about to come in the disc. Do you want to have a quick look? In here? Yeah. Can you see it coming yeah. across? Looking directly at the sun can blind you, but the telescope has special dark glass to protect your eyes. You've got a whole series of lines in there, and the very central one, can you see that? Uh -huh. Is the actual Greenwich Meridian. And as the sun comes across, as the disc of the sun comes across, and the centre of that is on the centre line, you've got noon. It's getting close, it's getting close. Now, there it is. Just crossed the line. OK. So that's exact Greenwich time noon, right? That's noon, today, here at Greenwich, yeah. Wow, and so at this moment, they would have been checking the clocks, marking it. All that's over. right, that's right. This is, this is the telescope. I mean, this yep. is the line that everyone <laughs> uses to spread the time throughout the world. That's right, it's the standard. Hey, if it's noon right now, then if we go outside, my shadow should be right across the meridian. Yeah, right? you'll have to be quick, because as you can see, the sun moves fairly fast, though. OK. Are you going to go? <laughs> Looks like it's exactly noon. Some dial's still working. Yeah. Once the astronomers corrected the Greenwich clock, they had to let everyone else know how to set theirs. A hundred years ago, they did that by hoisting a big ball, the Greenwich time ball, to the top of a mast on one of the buildings. Then, at exactly one o'clock, the ball would drop down the mast, and all the people around Greenwich and London could set their clocks, especially aboard the boats in the harbour below the observatory. So we didn't the watch. People okay. living nearby yeah, yeah, still yeah. use the time ball to set their watches, but the old telescope at Greenwich has given way to more modern instruments. One thing hasn't changed, though. There's still only one way to keep our clocks and calendars perfectly accurate, and that's by watching the way the Earth moves.